He keeps looking at his watch and closing his eyes in prayer, resting his profusely dank forehead against the seat back ahead of him, just above the black briefcase, which, if you listen, through the droning of the engines, seems to be ticking, ticking, softer, ticking. Ticking. softer than the heart ticking in your ears, ticking. ticking. I say to my companion, ticking. smooth flight so far. Ticking. So far. Ticking. That's ticking. quite a briefcase you've got ticking. there. He shrugs and says, Take you can taste my life's work. Ticking. And ticking. what is it exactly that you do? Ticking. You could say I'm a lobbyist. Ticking. He does not want to talk. Ticking. He wants to keep ticking. praying. Ticking. His hands, ticking. with their silky beige backs ticking. and their nails ticking. cut close like a technician's, ticking. tremble and jump in handling the ticking. plastic glass of Sprite when it comes ticking. with its exploding ticking. bubbles. Ah, uh, but one gets swept up in the airport throng. All those workaday faces, faintly pampered and spoiled in the boomer style, and those elders dressed like children for flying, in high-tech sneakers and polychrome cat suits, and those gum-chewing attendants taking tickets while keeping up a running flirtation with a uniformed bystander, a stoic blonde pilot, also normal, who could resist this vault into the impossible. Your sweat has slowly dried. Your praying neighbor has fallen asleep, emitting an odor of cardamom. His briefcase seems to have deflated. Perhaps not this time, but the possibility of impossibility will keep drawing us back to this scrape against the numbed sky, to this sleek sheath tangle of color-coded wires, these million rivets, this wing like a frozen lake, and your elbow.